Hey everyone, I'm just making a video here on the microwave oven transformer, also called MOT, which is rewired to put out a lower voltage for either an arc welder or a spot welder. And the video is just for entertainment purposes. I do not recommend anyone actually doing this, but there is tons of videos on YouTube and there's websites on this. So it has been covered so I'm planning on making a homemade spot welder, so I figured I might as well make a video on how to rewire the mod. So I got a nail on there, I'm just gonna plug it in and see. Oh, melted right through that, no problem. So I have the microwave oven transformer here, and I'm just gonna show you how you can rewire it to work at a lower voltage, higher current. Right now, the transformer, this is the primary coil where the 120 volts goes in, and this is the secondary coil. The secondary coil has a lot more thin windings. If you look at the, the windings, and you can see that there's a lot of little thin windings in there. So this is right now a step-up transformer. Your primary is the thick windings, and the secondary is the little thin windings with many turns. So there's a lot more turns in the secondary. So that's gonna then step up the voltage to, this transformer is about 2000 volts. So it's from 120 volts to about 2000 volts, a little, maybe a little more than that. So, but right now, what are you gonna do with the 2000 volts? Unless you have some use for the high voltage, then there really isn't much you can do with this transformer. And also these transformers are, are actually very dangerous. So now to actually rewind this transformer, there's basically two ways of doing it. One way you can take, you can put the, the transformer down on its side like this, and you can take a chisel and you can put the chisel here right over top of the winding. Let's say this one right here, sharper chisel of course would be better. And you can just put that down on, on top of the winding and then you can hit this with a hammer and then you can go over to this side, do the same thing, and then you can just punch out the core winding. Now that's one way of doing it, but you, you've got to be very careful of not cutting into your primary uh, winding. So you've got to be very careful. And the only other way uh, problem with doing that is it's very hard to wind in the wire. But if you're not, if you don't have any way of welding, and you don't want to take this transformer apart, then that's the best way of doing this because you're not going to have to take the actual transformer apart. And the transformer is made up of hundreds of little pieces of metal. And I have a stator over here, an example to show. Here's a stator that's been taken apart. And you can see inside the stator, there's all these, these uh, pieces of soft iron. So now the second way of doing this, if you look at the transformer closely, you'll see a slit and there's a slit right there. Basically there's a slit and right there and there's one right here. And you'll see on the other side as well. And so this is where you can actually take this, this piece here out and then you can slide out your windings. And so this transformer, only one end is open. Only this, only this end will come off. So what you're gonna have to do is cut the weld across here you can see there's a weld right here. You have to cut that weld off. And then you're gonna have to take this bottom piece off as well. You can see there's a weld here, so you have to grind this weld off, this weld. Not all transformers are like this, but once you've got that off, then you can cut this weld in here. There's another weld right there. You can see where the slit is. So once you've done that, then this piece, this whole piece here will come off. And then you can just slide the windings right out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this transformer with a grinder, just a cutoff wheel. You can use a uh, Dremel with a small cutoff wheel as well. And you can just cut this weld out here. It doesn't go in very deep. And then I'll have to cut this the base off as well. There's some welds here, 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 and then the one weld across the bottom there. So then this piece will pop right off. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna save this secondary coil. I have a use for the the windings in.
Now this side you can just snap off, so just twist it up like that, and boom, it's off now. Okay, so I've just threw a couple nails into a little piece of wood to actually hold the transformer in place because it's hard to cut precisely when the thing's rocking around on you. Clamp the board, an old board, down to the table and... Okay, so there we go. So it only takes about a couple minutes to take the Transformers frame apart. It's really easy, actually. So once you got it apart, you're going to want to probably slide a bolt through each end, uh, each hole, if the Transformer has one. This one does, to, to hold this together. So now we need to get the windings out of the Transformer without damaging them. So this one here is a primary coil. So you can try prying up on it carefully and see if it'll pop out. You don't want to damage this coil because you're going to be reusing this coil. So remember how the thing went together and you can just pry this out gently with that. Try not to scrape and scratch the coating on the on the, the, uh, the actual field windings. So you want to get this thing out and there we go. So there's our, our um, primary coil and it's in perfect shape. So you can actually use this for something else also, but I'll get into that later, um, these coils. But So now we're going to have to get these little pieces of metal. See, there's little pieces they have in here uh, separating the two windings. So I'm going to pry up on those. So I'm going to take out this wire, this coil here, Pop this one out. So there we go. So I'm going to try to tap the secondary coil out just with a hammer and pull around, sort of corner to corner, evenly pushing it out of the slot. secondary coil. Now you can see that the transformer is actually starting to delaminate. So that's what I mean by when when you um, if you rewrap these without doing what I'm doing here then it won't delaminate. So we won't be using the secondary coil for a arc welder or a spot welder. It's no good and so but I have a use for this coil and I'll probably make another project and show what I'm doing with this. So that's it, we have the transformer apart and you can see all the components. There's the actual transformer housing, all the steel uh, case of the transformer. And then we have our secondary and our primary coil and a bunch of sp two spacers in this particular transformer. These little iron spacers uh, laminated as well. And then a bunch of this insulating material now, of course, you can scrap this copper if you don't uh, build things like I do. Uh, I don't personally do that. I, I, I do large uh, scrapping of like cars and stuff that I uh, collect I, when I get too many cars and I have to scrap them. So, uh, but And then aluminum and whatever, I take in large loads. Uh, but copper, I don't. I usually keep the copper for projects. So now you can see that by taking a transformer apart like this, you, you get this delamination going on here. So the actual pieces of soft iron you can see here are actually delaminating. So so that's the problem you get. And and also because this transformer it sat outside and it's weathered, it's been outside and it's rusted. So you can see that it, it actually starts swelling up and 
it's not really that good to do this on a rusty transformer. Um, so just a little, little uh, hint there about that. Um, so you might be better off just to actually chisel out this coil the way I, I showed in the in the first arc welder uh, that I built. That that transformer were wrapped with the with the actual secondary chiseled out. So there was no problem with the with this with all the laminates coming apart like this. So now the next step is to rewrap this transformer. And it depends on what you're going to be doing with the transformer. Um, so you have to if, if you're going to make an arc welder, then you're not going to wrap in really heavy gauge wire with few turns because then you're not going to be able to uh, get the voltage you need. So the more turns in here of a of let's say a 10 gauge or an 8 gauge wire, that would be better for an arc welder. So, but if you're going to use this for a spot welder, then you can use uh, 2 gauge, you can use 6 gauge copper, um, you can use heavy wire for that and you don't need as many turns. So it depends on what you're going to be doing with the transformer. So, so now I'm going to rewind this transformer to be used for a spot welder. I've already made homemade arc welders, but now it's time to make a spot welder. So it's pretty easy. All you got to do is just wrap your secondary coil in there, which is the heavy wire, because this is going to be a step down transformer now. And what I'm using here, this is six gauge wire. Um, it's pretty thick, but it's not as thick as you could wrap in a two gauge. The transformer temporarily put back together and what I've done is I've just held it with some strapping and the strapping just goes through the holes and then I've just twisted it. I have two pieces through each one on both sides. So now I've just put a piece of round all around the center of the transformer here to hold it because I know that there's a lot of people out there that won't be able to weld it back together. So now I'm just going to plug it in and try it with just the round all and the strapping. Oh, no, it's bad. Two pieces of strapping on there now and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so it's going to melt right through the hole. So I got four pieces of strapping on there. Uh, there's the roll of strapping. I think it's a 16 gauge. It's for a rebar, so. so it'll probably melt right through those. So now you can see it works fine without it welded. So if you don't want to weld it, then you could try using the round all that I've used here. Um, you can actually put more of this stuff if you want and put it one around here, one around here, and then one in the center. And so then it would be it would be uh, tightened down uh, perfectly. Uh, or of course you could use some steel, uh, some eighth inch steel, uh, and you could just lay a piece on top and then a piece on the bottom, and then you could drill four holes and then slide in four bolts. And that would be the best because it would hold it down really nice and tight. So the video is just for entertainment purposes. By no means I'm recommending anyone to do this. This is just to show how it could possibly be done. And there's tons of people out there doing it. But it's not worth it to actually do this if you really don't have the experience with electricity or you're just starting out in electricity. It's something where there's no coming back if you make a mistake. Uh, if you catch the load of this transformer or you you attach something to the output of the transformer and you burn down your house, it's not really worth it. So, and you can get welders online used or you can buy brand new arc welders for like 70 bucks on sale. Um, you can get MIG welders for a couple hundred bucks. So it's not worth it. And so thank you for watching.